Well, a video has gone viral from Jose Vega. He confronted the editors of the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, and Reuters before being thrown to the ground by the dean of Columbia University, thrown to the floor for asking tough questions about the Nord Stream pipeline, Seymour Hirsch, about journalism in general, and why these newspapers are refusing to cover one of the biggest stories of the last century. Watch this video. One with Seymour Hirsch, because it's a policy and press Hall event, so shouldn't we be talking about the Nord Stream since that's the biggest story of the century? And you guys, you know, I mean, you have the executive editor of the New York Times there who came out with a phony story to try and block Seymour Hirsch. It just, it's just kind of funny how that happened, you know? I mean, did you even acknowledge Seymour Hirsch? All of you are executive editors of papers that broke Pentagon, My Lai, Watergate. Is this the same papers or not? I mean, is there anything you've gotten right in the last 20 years, or am I mistaken about that? I mean, it's just kind of funny because Iraq, wrong. Syria, wrong. Russiagate, really wrong. Okay, I mean, the list goes on and on. So the last thing you could do to try and actually fix your reputation is acknowledge that through leaks, we had to find out that Zelensky was going to bomb Moscow on the anniversary. I mean, if you're so impartial, shouldn't you at least say, right, that Zelensky was going to bring us on the verge of World War III? That seems pretty fair. While Julian Assange rots in prison, all of you got, you know, fat checks because he's in jail for doing your job. And you know what? Tucker Carlson ain't no Seymour Hirsch, but he did something you guys are scared to do. Speak the truth and actually be critical of the war, which is why he was actually fired from Fox. Because you are all cowards, every single one of you. None of you have actually had any relevancy. And you know what? The mainstream press is now dying. Nobody's ever going to listen to you again. You have no credibility with the public. The only people who care about what you have to say are elite assholes who have nothing productive to say anymore. And it's dying off. So will you at least say something either about Nord Stream or Ukraine or the fact that Zelensky brought us to the verge of World War III and the only reason we knew about that was through leaks? I'm, go ahead. It's a free speech event, right? You guys are the press. Let's say something here. Mr. Khan, come on. You know, you're the executive head of the New York Times, you know? I'm just trying to get into some good trouble here, man. Ooh, listen, Karen, get out of my face for a second. I got to talk to these gentlemen. <clears throat> well, I just want to hear what they have to say. Go ahead. I'm done. Wait your turn. Wait your turn. You're not going to tell him to you. Come. Wait your turn. You could, you could project if we can't. I'm just happy to respond to hear everybody's point of view. Yeah. So thank you. All right. I do think that we need to give uh, our moderator a chance to ask one of the questions. We're on the verge of World War III. Let's go. Let's go. Say something about this bombing. We blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Listen, don't stand there while there are people rotting in prison. Nobody said anything about Uhuru, right? The socialists who are in jail for being critical of this war? God damn it! Let's go. Let's go. At least say something about the people in jail for being critical of this war. They don't deserve to be in prison right now! So, of course, it looks like these newspapers, these mainstream media publications and corporate press are in bed with the deep state, the military industrial complex. Dan Cohen is our Washington correspondent who's been diving deep into the research and how all of these organizations are actually intertwined into one big animal. And Dan, welcome to the show. I, you know, something stands out to me over the past 24 hours, which is Politico releasing an article saying that the uh, high ups inside the Pentagon are thrilled that Tucker Carlson is no longer an employee at Fox News because he would denigrate the military. This is just, I guess, just another example of this sort of deep state collusion with mainstream press. Tucker was really the only figure in mainstream media to go against the grain and challenge the propaganda and psychological operations that we're all subjected to. I mean, he's, I can't think of another person. There isn't another one. Now the entire mainstream media is just full of shills. 
Um, and I think, you know, that video of Jose Vega, that's exactly what he was trying to say, what he was trying to do, demanding that these uh, uh, editors talk about Seymour Hersh's reporting. So I want to say, first of all, hats off to Jose. For me, that was like a spiritual experience watching him just refuse to shut up and play nice. And I love when the New York Times editor tried to placate him and right. say like, well, we should listen to you know, all views. And he just, instead, he just kept going and to the point where they actually had to drag him out. So, you know, those Jose and a few others from the Schiller Institute who've been holding politicians and media figures accountable in public forums is fantastic. And I think we need a lot more people to do that. I want to highlight the role of the New York Times, the Washington Post, and also foreign policy magazine as fixtures of the permanent war state. So several of their national security correspondents are currently or have been in the past fellows at the Center for a New American Security. This is one of the premier uh, Washington permanent war think tanks founded in 2007 as the people were tiring of, of the Bush era and the Iraq war. And they sought to really bring together uh, the two parties and do away with partisanship into the sort of permanent war uniparty, which already existed, but but not in the same way. It's been much more effective. The Obama administration took a lot of staff um, from that think tank seen as, and it's been very effective ever since then. So now we have uh, several correspondents, David Sanger of the New York Times. We have Eric Schmidt, Greg Jaffe, uh, Thomas Ricks, all of these guys have put out countless lies from Iraq to Libya, Syria, Russiagate, all the Russiagate stories, Russian bounties, Russian troll farms. They are just liars who are in bed with CNAS. And CNAS is funded by government agencies, U.S. government agencies, primarily the Department of Defense, but also the State Department with millions and millions of dollars. It's also funded by weapons manufacturers, oil corporations, George Soros's Open Society Foundation. But these reporters are supposed to be independent, but they're fellows at an organization funded by the U.S. government. What I don't know is, does that come with a stipend? Are they actually paid indirectly by the U.S. government? I reached out to CNAS. They didn't respond. I've asked them before. And so then, so the other element is you have the Biden administration is also heavily staffed by former CNAS figures. At least 16 members of the Biden administration worked at CNAS. Among them, Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Nuland, aka the you know Ukraine uh, coup monger. Uh, we have Assistant Secretary of Defense for Indo-Pacific Security Affairs, Eli Ratner. Director of Cost Assessment and Program Evaluation for the DOD, Susanna Bloom. Assistant Secretary of Treasury for Terrorist Financing, Elizabeth Rosenberg. Deputy CIA Director, David Cohen. He, he, he worked at, he was at CNAS, where these guys are fellows. Uh, you have uh, White House National Security Council figure, Peter Harrell, or Harrell. Counselor to the U.S. Uh, State Department, Derek Cholet. Under Secretary of uh, Defense for Policy, Colin Call, National Security Council Coordinator, Kurt Campbell, and DNI, uh, Director for National Intelligence, Avril Haines. All of them, and those are just some of them, all of them were part of CNAS. And presumably when the next administration comes, if it's not democratic, they'll just rotate out of government back into the think tanks. It's just, you know, the constant kind of revolving doors inside, inside this. So you have Journalists in prominent organizations, prominent outlets, rubbing elbows at the, at the same table as functionaries at the permanent war state. Well, Would well, I? A, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, and then you have, uh, did, do they disclose this information anywhere? Like if you read a David Sanger piece, do you have a, an entire paragraph devoted to these conflicts of interest in every article that he writes? I mean, you'd think, though, if they had any journalistic ethics, even a modicum of, of ethics, they would. But no, that's that's only visible on an obscure scene as website uh, uh, page on their site that I came across. So, no, there's no there's no uh, 
you know, there, there's there's no transparency about that. That doesn't say in their articles, in their bio, in their interviews. Um, you know, when when seen as uh, does these those war simulations, you know, that that you showed a couple days ago that Redacted reported on earlier this week. That's not in there. That's not, you know, ABC and NBC don't show uh, that, oh, this is actually funded by the U.S. government, by the military industrial complex. They don't say any of that. These are just supposed to be independent thinkers. So um, yeah, and, it's and all they give them all... full air. They give them full airtime. So meet the press. NBC does a full whole segment on CNAS, all of their strategic war games planning for war with China. ABC does a on the floor of the House of Representatives, you, you have the that anchor for ABC News standing there interviewing them, doing this war, war propaganda on television with no disclosure and no mention of these these relationships. Exactly, exactly. They did one with uh, with NBC with Chuck Todd last year in twenty two. Similarly, where they talked about you know war with Taiwan and well, we don't we don't want it, but we're just preparing for it anyway. So I mean, think tank this think tank seen as in bed with the government, the military industrial complex, the media, but we're supposed to believe that we have some beautiful democracy and that our media holds the government and power centers accountable. But China is the bad one because it's a young, uh, so it has a one party state. So the, but the US is a one party state. It's just the permanent war party. And honestly, I think ours is even more cult. It's, it's cultish because you have to pretend that we're that we're a shining city on the hill, a beacon of democracy for the world. Well, meanwhile, our government and this and the media and this whole beast is carrying out coups and wars around the world and destroying, you know, uh, life for working class people um, in this country. And and you know, that's just the reality of it. Yeah, Victoria Newland, who you mentioned, is being, of course, responsible for the coup in Ukraine. Uh, of course, now just actively uh, fomenting uh, total destabilization of Sudan over the past week. So she's a busy woman. And uh, and it's amazing that these boards exist where these members, high profile members of the media are sitting on these boards, but no disclosure in their coverage to the American people in their news articles. Um, I'm sure I'm sure the New York Times, I'm sure the Washington Post will start to print that as part of every article that these guys write from now on their conflicts of interest. Dan Cohen, thank you so much for joining us from Washington, diving deep into this beast, this deep state beast, as we keep our eye on it, because who else is going to cover it? And, 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 and yes, applause to Jose Vega for, for standing up and asking those tough questions. We need more people uh, like him to ask these tough questions. Dan, thanks so much. Amen. Thanks a lot. Merkman in our chat right now says, uh, Jose gives me hope that someone is acting for us. Yes, so we really, we raise a glass to you, uh, Jose. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.